everyone. Welcome back. Welcome back to my channel. It's Terry. Welcome to another edition of An Orchid Today. Now today, as stated in the description, I'm going to do a little spotlight on this Latoria that I just received, but I've had it in the past. This is Dan Aberens, which is a micro miniature of sorts. It never really gets more than the size that it is currently two, two and a half, three inches. Very floriferous, like all Latourias, they are capable of reblooming off of old, old canes. So any of these canes are viable of blooming. They don't bloom from sheaths, although there is a little protrusion that could actually be a sheath at the top of each pseudobulb. I guess that would be a sheath. but the sheath pretty much stays closer to the top of the, the leaf axle until uh, blooming is about to be initiated. And generally that is accompanied by a flush of roots. <clears throat> that is pretty typical of most Latourias. Now this Latouria specifically, it is a species. This uh, Latouria hails from New Guinea. Um, nickname of this orchid is the deviating dendrobium. I'm not sure why. It was described by uh, Rudolf Schlechter in 1912. Again, I said it was native to Papua New Guinea. It's epiphytic orchid grows on tree ferns and shade branches in shade that are covered in mosses. Generally, uh, in the mountains, uh, down to the coast. So it is a moderate to intermediate uh, altitude plant. As I said, it gets it stays small and compact. Um, it is uh, appreciative of wide range of temperatures. Can take it coolish to warm. Um, Usually flowers uh, can flower sporadically throughout the year, but it's more uh, likely to flower in winter, spring, and even late late fall. The flowers are, as I said, they're, this is a very floriferous plant. Uh, there's generally lots of flowers to a spike. They're very small and tiny, but during certain times of the day, there can be a fragrance. And this species is used very widely in hybridation with uh, other Latourias for its size and for the uh, floriferousness of the flowers. Uh, Latourias, as uh, if you don't know, Latourias can be very uh, big and club shaped. And so when you cross it back with Aberrans, it takes that size down and makes it a little bit more manageable. And sometimes it imparts that fragrance to the cross as well not focusing so good this morning. These plants, uh, their culture is, as I said, warm temperatures. They like uh, shady, they like canopy style light, meaning that they like it high up in the canopy, shaded by leaves, but they do appreciate bright shade, if that makes, makes it more clear. They like high humidity throughout the year, especially in summer they, while they're growing, they like it to be in the 80 to 85% humidity. In the winter time, uh, when they're a little more de uh, dormant, not really dormant because they still like to be watered year round, so they are not dormant. And that is one thing that will cause this plant to die really fast. The lack of humidity and also the watering, but the humidity can drop in winter significantly. They really don't like it much higher than 50s or 60s, 60% that is in the winter as far as humidity is concerned. But the water is abundant throughout the year. As I said, it is reduced in the winter time, but uh, this plant should never be allowed to dry out. Uh, it should be watered as it approaches dryness um, but it should never be allowed to dry out because once you start to see the yellowing that starts at the bottom of the canes and slowly, slowly moves its way up, that means it's a slow death. And, you know, 
you're just not watered it enough. Generally, that's what is the cause of that is the watering. So um, these prefer to be mounted, but it can take uh, a fast draining media that has a little bit of moisture retentativeness in it, but it does like to be drained by the end of the day or dry by the end of the day. As I said, uh, it doesn't want to be sopping wet, but it has to not dry. Now I just said that it doesn't want to dry. It doesn't want to dry completely. Um, so it can't go for more than a day without water. That's what I'm trying to say. But its roots do need to be dried by night. Although in the wild, obviously they get watered during the night, but there's also lots of breezes that uh, have a cooling effect and they dry things fairly rapidly, more so than what you would really uh, think. But yeah, it's really easy. It's, you know, there's always a spot for aberrants and it's a cute little thing. If you've enjoyed my video, press the like button. Enjoy your orchids. Bye.